If you love makeovers and me forgetting to turn my microphone on, you're going to love today's episode. Welcome back to Laugh Cry DIY. I am Katie and today we are coming at you with a very, very, very hot, sexy makeover. I am standing in the dining room of two very awesome people, Kylie and Oma. Kylie is an awesome business coach, Omar is a hilarious comedian, and most importantly, they are newlyweds. That's right. Yay. So, newlyweds, why did you call me over today? I run my own business. I'm a business coach, so everything is virtual. So I really need to have a space that's like a beautiful, um, put together background for Zoom calls that makes me look a little more professional as I level up my business. Omar, anything you want to add or say? Um, well, we got married during COVID, so we didn't have a wedding, and so doing redoing the wall would be a nice way to level up because our wedding registry uh, has not been used. If you guys wanted to contribute, go ahead. But please uh, donate. Yeah, to their wedding but COVID registry. weddings, not a lot of gifts. <laughs> Well, what's very exciting is that Kylie and Omar are actually going to go out of town for a few days, so I'm going to stay here with their dog Mocha, and Mocha and I together are going to transform this lovely dining room. First up today, there are a handful of items in Omar and Kylie's dining room that we want to give our first makeover to, and therefore, I would like to formally welcome you to paint -a palooza featuring curtain rods dog bowl holder, wine rack, and your favorite $25 store frames. So what are we doing with $25 store photo frames? We're painting them white. Next up, we are working on these curtain rods. We want to do a little bit more of a vibrant gold. So I'm just giving it a quick little scuff sand. JLo, Hustlers. That's not the right way. This is Mocha's dog bowl holder, which has had quite a life and a few stories to tell. So we are also going to scuff sand this and make her more beautiful too. Painting frames round two. Great news. The lighting right now is beautiful and the frames are a nightmare. Now, painting plastic is always a little bit tricky and these dollar store frames are, surprise, plastic. I got black and brown frames. The brown frames have chosen to not turn white and somehow it is having, you know, a My Chemical Romance reaction and it is turning pink peach neon orange. I'm gonna make a very controversial choice and I'm gonna paint these with latex paint, but it's not gonna be today. What's up? Day two, let's do this. I have a new idea. I think that I might do these all in the latex paint to be a thick primer, and then I might hit them one more time with the white spray paint, and that way they'll get really full even coverage. The pink bleed through is happening again. So I think I have to like do them all in the latex paint to prevent that. And um, uh. Mocha, are we ready to paint? You gonna stay there? Okay. We are moving on from the disaster paint day of those frames and we are moving on to painting the actual wall in the dining room. Now, the goal of this makeover was to give Kylie and Omar a really bold, beautiful accent wall that Kylie can use as her pretty Zoom background. It's also the focal point of the room because when you walk in, it's the first thing you see. So we wanted to do some sort of beautiful, bold color, but what color were we gonna choose? Were we just gonna go to Home Depot and grab some swatches, like some commoners? No. 
In this house, we are bespoke, we are tailored, we are fashion week. So we decided to custom color match the colors to Kylie's beautiful West Elm curtains. Ooh, do you see? So we have this beautiful girl group of blues. Obviously, this is Lauren Hill, this is Jewel, this is Alanis Morissette, and this is Fiona Apple. So which girl did we choose? Leave a comment below with your guess. So we have removed the art, we have patched, we have sanded, we've prepped the floors, but there's one part of painting this wall that's a little bit tricky. And that is this area right here where the dining room and kitchen wall meet. But we gotta figure out where exactly to draw that line. Like, do we draw it from the countertop? Do we draw it right flush with here? No. There is an architectural feature. Can you see it right here? That was my impression of a dude. And that's what we're gonna use to delineate the line. Now. How do you make sure that you draw on a perfect line? A level that is this long. So miraculously, this is literally exactly as tall as the counter and line are. It's also just perfectly level when I set it against that. Now here's a problem, when you are painting a colored wall and you tape off that paint line, you think the physics will make sense. You think you're gonna paint it and peel it off and it will be a clean, crisp line. It won't, it lies to you. Due to the phenomenon of wicking, which is where the paint absorbs into the paint layer below it, you will often have a little bit of bleed through and it's not as crisp as you want. My best friend, Internet, has a lot of genius hacks for this. You can just take some simple white paint that you have stored in a KFC macaroni and cheese container and you just simply paint a small little line along it and that way that will create a barrier so that when the dark paint goes over it, it doesn't bleed through and it does its magic. So the genius furniture flippers of TikTok also showed me that one easy thing to do is get a paint tray and just coat it in foil and that way you can throw away the foil, keep the tray, save the planet. All right, y'all, it is the very exciting moment of truth where we find out exactly what paint color we chose. Now I am gonna be using my other favorite tool, which is this corner cutter. It like has these wheels, and so it helps you go along the edges of like ceilings and baseboards and corners perfectly, um, but you need a flat surface to put paint to do that. So this is a great tip. Um, all the pros use it. Order some pizza last night, dig the box out of the trash can, put some foil in it, and then use that as your little paint tray for that. Ready? Let's do this. I forget, how does my time-lapse music go? It goes like, dun, 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 dun. Time for coat two. Okay, the paint is still wet and the internet says you should always take off the paint tape while it's wet. So this is our moment of truth. It's impeccable. Now that the accent wall is drying, we are going to turn our attention to this lovely ceiling fan. Now in this room, this apartment is like a standard size and we have a lot going on in terms of like patterns and colors. So we wanna to try to heighten the ceilings as we can. Normally the way to do this would be to raise your curtains as high as possible. However, we can't do that in this room because behind this drywall is some sort of metal plating. But one thing we can do is try to kind of minimize the visual clutter of the fan. We're gonna take down these fan blades, we're gonna clean them up and we're gonna contact paper them white. That way they can kind of blend up into the ceiling. And when you're looking at this whole beautiful dining room, there's not quite as much visual clutter from the top. Boom. Now she's naked. Hi Mocha. DIYing is so hard, isn't it? I know. 
So one of the things that really needed to be rehabbed in this space was Sweet Mocha's food bowl. So we spray painted the base gold and now I had an idea to glam up the top a little bit. One of the annoying things when you are painting a wall and you do swatch it is that then you are left with a bunch of paint samples. But I had the idea, why not use some of these and do a cool color blocking pattern on the top. And I thought I would actually use this vinyl contact paper on top of it and then paint the design on top of that. It's a new day. We've had a lot of adventures in the house. Hi, Mocha. Mocha didn't want to help. She didn't want to help so much that she went and injured herself last night. Poor thing. Okay. We have our wall painted and now it is time to work on the most exciting part of this project, our feature wall. Now, like I said, we already have a lot of color and pattern in this space, but I wanted to figure out a way to make a cool feature wall without super, super clashing everything. So I thought that maybe instead of going for like some sort of wallpaper or something like that, let's try to incorporate an architectural element. And therefore we are using $25 store frames to create a gridded pattern on the wall. This is kind of a faux wall molding effect. You can do this with varying sizes of frames. You can paint them the same color. You can paint them contrasted color. Uh, I'm horrible at math. I'm horrible at measurement. We know this. I called my brother who's an architect and I asked him to help me figure out how to lay out 25 11 by 14 frames. And he sent me this incredible picture. And then I realized that the frames hold 11 by 14, but they are themselves 12 by 15. So it may sound complicated, but it's not as complicated as you think. Here is what you do. You lay out what you want your grid to look like. Measure your width and your length. The height of this wall is 95 inches. We have five 15 inch frames, which is 75 inches. This leaves us 20 inches to spare between my six gaps. 20 divided by six, 3.3 inches. Wow, and then you do the same thing for the width and then you mark it all out. To do this, I'm going to use tape measure, small level and enormous level, and a really janky piece of chalk. I didn't think I could do it, I'm not gonna lie. I never believed in myself for one second. I tell you, there's really something about a hammer that makes you feel like a man. Mocha is doing a great job of helping. Um, literally after measuring all of those frames and hanging them up, this is actually, um, she's embodying how I feel as well. And just so you know, she's okay. She just lost one of her toenails. Okay, you rest and I'll go back to work. Now here are some things to know about command strips. Number one, Read the packaging. You're supposed to wipe down the walls with um, rubbing alcohol. Kylie has wintergreen scented rubbing alcohol. You're also supposed to wait for paint to dry for seven days before you put the command strips on. Now, I'm gonna be honest, I'm not doing that because Kylie and Omar are not too worried about this wall. When they leave, they're gonna have to paint and patch it anyways. So even if some paint comes off, they're gonna be repainting it. But if you are super worried about that, wait for your paint to cure Follow the directions on the command strips. Eat your fruits and vegetables. Watch me cry. That's the secret to a happy life. Just watch me cry about freaking measurements. Ugh. Cool. All right, I did the whole freaking wall, but I wanted to show you an exciting, perfect moment of hell. So I think that I'm going to go to the hardware store and possibly get a small handsaw and just cut. In the meantime, I'm gonna wipe off all the chalk and I'm just gonna go through and hand paint any little chips or dings. 
Is this interesting content? I don't know. Welcome to the final day. One of the last things I need to do is wrap the fan blades in the contact paper. So I just cut the contact paper into little strips. So I'm just gonna trim off the excess and leave a little bit of a border all the way around. When you're contact papering around like round edges, you just go in and you cut a bunch of small little cuts. You basically just wanna cut sassy little fringe and that way you can individually shape the contact paper around that curl. Ta-da! By the way, Kylie is a DIYer herself. She painted her fridge and I'm gonna link her tutorial below because that is like next level in my opinion. We are putting our beautiful curtains back on. Painting your curtain rod seems like such a small detail, but it is such a huge thing. I know that they say, you know, that if you want to improve women's lives, invest in their education and economically empower them. But to me, it's like, girls, just paint your curtain rods. So I went ahead and bought a $7 little mini file saw and I cut this frame to the perfect proportion. Don't mind if I plug in my vacuum without interrupting a design. You might remember the cute little wine rack. She was gray, now she's gold. She's elegant. You know the best thing is when you're at a thrift store and you find a pack of fake plants and you don't know why you would need it, but it's $4 and it's like 100 and you have it in your car for literally about three months for no reason. And then you realize that today is the day you get to use them. Yay. All right, we have put the madness back together. Everything is exciting. Kylie and Omar are on their way home as we speak. So I think we are all ready to cut to our final reveal. Okay, so we just walked in the door. We just landed from our trip. It's really late at night. And we're ready to look at our new space. No spoilers. <gasps> wow. Oh. That was today's episode. Huge thank you to Omar and Kylie for having me over, for letting me make a total mess of their place. This wall was $25 for dollar store frames, about 30 bucks for a can of paint, and let's say $20 in command strips. So that's about a $70 accent wall. That is quite a look. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I hope you found any of these ideas helpful. Thank you to Mocha, who was the best assistant ever. And if you're inspired to try something like this in your own home, tag me on Instagram at laughcrydiy. Until next time, I will see you at the dollar store.